All right, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all this morning. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open up to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Uh, we are, uh, if you've taken notes, you can do so in the weekly updates that you received when you came in, or if you'd like to, you can go to the Uversion Bible app under the events section, and, and we have a listen right there in the Northeast Christian Church. You can click on that, click save, and you can follow along and add more notes to that as well. So feel free to use that in your note-taking as well. Um, in December, we are going to start a series called The Christmas Survival Guide. Because isn't, isn't that what we all want to know? We want to know how to survive the holiday season. And guess what? The holidays are already here. They're already here, and, and uh, we, are, we are going to talk about surviving Christmas. But, but now we're going to talk we're going to talk about thriving. I feel like we need to talk about thriving before we talk about surviving. And one of the things that, that I've learned over the years is that a key part of thriving in life is probably something that we take for granted the most, that we struggle with probably the most, is the lost virtue of thankfulness. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, that we can thrive through thankfulness. We can thrive through thankfulness. And so for the next two weeks, we're going to talk about this. Um, over this lost virtue of thankfulness, and, and I want to talk with you about how important it is and, and how we can, we can live it out in our lives. Now, this past week, uh, my family and I, um, we got a good reminder, at least I got a good reminder, I think my kids did too, a good reminder of thankfulness, because let me just say this, I was gone last week, thank you so much to Mr. John for preaching, everybody love knowing how much you preach it. Good, awesome, right? and um, I heard so many great things, and and, uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful I'm thankful for my church. I'm, faith, I'm thankful for my, my faith family because I went away and, and we, we were gone. We went to Clearwater and just to get away for the week, it was fantastic. It was great. We, we got to rest and relax. We went out and played, had some fun. Um, saw that, saw the uh, dolphin over in Clearwater. Um, winter. winter, that's it. Winter. Yep. Saw winter. <laughs> that guy's pretty cool. All right. And, uh, Ate lots of crab legs, like two nights in a row. It was awesome. And so just a wonderful weekend. Now Sunday, Sunday came along, and uh, we decided we'd go, we're going to go visit another church. Over It was over in Largo. We're going to go visit another church. And uh, nice, nice church. People, people were warm. Um, they were warm and welcome. It was a nice little atmosphere. Um, it, was a, it was a fun little church. They had a really good worship service and everything. Except for that part, there was like this light that kept flashing in my eye. <laughs> just got me so mad. I just wanted to just take that light out. I was like, this, I'm blind. I'm so grumpy at that point. But anyways, going through the whole service, and, and then we get to, I'm, I'm partial. I'm biased. We get to my favorite part, the preaching. I'm like, all right, here we go. Here we go. Tell me I'm a sinner, all right? And tell me what I need to do to not be a sinner anymore. I love this part, okay? And uh, so I sit there, and me and my family are sitting there. Back row, just so you know, when we visit another church, we sit in the back row, all right? <clears throat> so uh, we're sitting there, and the preacher comes out, and, and everything so far is great. And then, like, we all notice it as a family unit. We're like, there's something not right. There's just something not right with this fella. He's a big dude. He's like me, like about the same size as me, maybe a little bit bigger and everything. He looked like the guy in Despicable Me had really skinny legs. Um <laughs> And I, uh, and I just see it, and I'm like, oh no, my family sees it too, and Faith's got big eyes, and Toby, my seven-year-old, just does this. And Jonas, who's sitting right next to me, goes, Dad, the preacher's wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> and I sat right there, and I go, I know something. I know. And I couldn't, and I just was focused on that the entire, he had a really good message, but I, I just sat there watching, wondering, like, how in the world is he walking? How is, <laughs> how is he bending his knees? How is he breathing? Uh, are those jeans, or are they like those leotards that are painted to look like jeans? Um, and I was praying the entire time, I was, Lord, help reinforce that stitching. Okay, just, Lord, please. Then, and this is so great, then in the middle of him preaching, he stops and he goes, he's, he's talking, he goes, and I know what you're thinking. How can you trust a guy? How can you trust a preacher 
in skinny jeans. And I do what all you did. All right? I did to him what all you all do to me. I'm all like, amen. <laughs> Felt great. I know why you guys do it now. It was awesome. <laughs> Felt so good. And so um, my family and I left that church. Very thankful for our faith family. Northeast Christian Church, thank you so much. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I, I am thankful for the ability to breathe while preaching. I am thankful. <laughs> I am thankful for being able to do this without having to worry about anything ripping. And I am thankful for being a preacher in a church that I do not have to wear skinny jeans to. Thank you, Northeast Christian Church. You are awesome. You should guess. It really is the small things that matter. It really is. And so, um, but I want to talk about that a little bit more. All right, turn to 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. A little background here. Paul is writing to the Thessalonian church. And the church that he's writing, pretty much when he writes to any church, he's writing words of encouragement. He's writing on, on instructions on how to live, how to live in this world, how to live in this life, how to live with God, in God, how to do all this life while you're in this world, in these circumstances, and in these situations. And in the circumstances and situations that the Thessalonians were in were rough times. They were painful times. They were difficult times. They were under strict, strong persecution from the very people that they used to fellowship with, that they used to associate with, with fellow Jews that had rejected Jesus, all right? You look back in 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 through 15, it says, For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's church in Judea, which are in Christ. It says, you suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews. Continue on, it said, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets also drove them out. He, he reverts back and he says, here's the deal. He takes them back to the Old Testament. He says, just like what they did to the prophets, they're doing to you, you're going through these situations and these circumstances, and they were keeping the Christians from doing their God-given duty of sharing the gospel, of making disciples. They were keeping them from doing just that. And persecution comes in many forms. It can be words. It can be harassment. It can be uh, exile. It can be imprisonment. Uh, it, can, it can be beatings. And it can be killings as well. And so the Thessalonians were going through all of this at a time while Paul is writing to them. They're going through all of this difficult, painful, hurtful things. And so... At the end of 1 Thessalonians, you get to chapter 5, that's what makes this verse that much more interesting. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Here's what he says. Get all the way to the end there. Paul says, be joyful always. What? Pray continually. Seriously? And give thanks in all circumstances. How? You, you have to sit back. And if you sit there and you think to yourself, you know, my life struggles and I struggle in my life. But then this church, who some of them are dying, some of them are in prison. How? How do you do a, How are you joyful always? See, out of all of these, out of all three of these, there's only one of these that probably made sense to them. And chances are it probably makes sense to you. And that's the middle one. Pray continually. Right? Because in those circumstances, in those situations that are difficult, that's what you do. You pray, you become the overnight prayer warrior. You become the overnight prayer warrior where you're like, Lord, Lord, help me not to say what I'm actually thinking to them. Lord, Lord, help me not to physically hurt them. Lord, help me not to, to literally take their lives from them. It's all about them. Help me, Lord, to, to, I just lift them up. I just pray for them. I give them into your hands, and you're just like, them. Them. That's the only one that makes sense. We become that overnight prayer warrior. But, but he doesn't just say that. He says, be joyful always. Nope. No. Nope. That is a foreign concept. That is a foreign concept uh, for us in those circumstances, with them. That's what that is. How in the world can I be joyful always when I don't always feel joyful? 
And I don't feel that way. I don't feel joyful. But Paul doesn't stop there. In addition to that, he says, give thanks in all circumstances. No. No. Seriously. Seriously. How is that even possible? Because if we're, if we're completely honest with ourselves, we have felt frustrated at the lack of good things in our life at one point or another. And sometimes you just don't feel thankful, right? You just don't feel thankful. And so seriously, what if you aren't? What if, what if you aren't thankful? Because here's the deal. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that I'm not thankful for. I'm not thankful for the battery life on my iPhone. No, I am not thankful for that. I'm not thankful for the bicyclist on the main road because I'm always afraid I'm going to hit him. And I don't want to be that guy. All right? I'm always afraid of that, so I'm not thankful for that. I'm not thankful for the person in front of me at Starbucks that's taken six years to order. I'm not thankful for the show, Grey's Anatomy. I don't care how many seasons it's been. <laughs> like, been on for like 40 seasons. I don't care. I'm still not thankful for it. All right? I'm not thankful for the Buick Roadmaster. I don't know why that's in there. It's just not, I'm not, I don't care about it. And I am certainly, I'm certainly not thankful for skinny jeans on the table. I'm sorry, Brandy. <laughs> I just saw him looking at me with those little, those little brown eyes. They're brown, right? They're blue? <laughs> I know. Amen. I'll do it for you. I just couldn't take it. All right. Um, but see, that's the thing. Paul, Paul did not say a good thanks for all circumstances. He said something a little different. Very, and it might seem insignificant. But he said, he said, give thanks in all circumstances. So like, so like you don't have to be thankful for losing your job. And you don't have to be thankful for a failed relationship. And you don't have to be thankful for being sick. Because you don't have to be thankful for all that. And Paul didn't say be thankful for. He said be thankful in. Which, which for me is a significant difference. For me, I look at this and I realize that it tells me that I actually have a choice in all this. I have a choice in all this. I can choose to be thankful in those situations and in those circumstances. In the letter to the Philippians, Paul elaborates a little bit more. He says, he says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests. God, and this is this is the attitude. This attitude should envelop our prayers and our petitions to God. This difference between for and in is it's very profound. It means we have a choice. And it actually means that, that thankfulness is less of a feeling and it is more of a choice. Thankfulness is less of a feeling, and more of a choice. While we may never be grateful for certain painful experiences. We may never be that. We, we can still be grateful during them, in them. We can still pray with a thankful heart in that. And I believe, I believe that really does change everything. I believe that changes everything for us. Because here's the deal. Let me get real practical. There's a, there is a fact, and it's the truth is, is that there is actually evidence and there is study that gratefulness, that thankfulness affects every single one of us in a very positive way. There was a lot of studies that were done about this, about how us giving thanks on a regular basis changes us for the better. It keeps us healthier. It keeps us happier. And I don't know about you, but I love being happy. And I love being healthy. And if this is something that I can do to help change that, I think it's worth it. But check this out. Check this out. One such study it assigned us one group. It was, a, it was done with young adults. It was done with young adults, like young 20s and everything like that, mid-20s and down. <clears throat> and, and one study, they said that one group of them was going to do a, a journal, keep a journal, every single day, and they had to write down what they were thankful for. Now, the other group, 
They didn't do that. They just wrote down in their journal what they were annoyed at. Okay. So they had one group that's writing down all the things they're thankful for, and the other group that's writing down all the things that they were annoyed at, and they think that they deserve more than somebody else. They, they basically had a complaining journal. So they took their complaining journal, they did all this, and the young adults that were assigned the gratitude journal, they showed greater increases in determination, attention, enthusiasm, energy, compared to the other group. It was considered a clear, a clear cut benefit. But then you got to ask the question, you're like, okay, they're the 20 year olds, you know, what about, what about the older ones? You know, the, the young people, they haven't been beaten up in life. What about the older ones that have already been destroyed, right? So you're sitting there thinking to yourself, what about them? And so they did a study over again with just older adults. They did the same thing, two separate groups. And they found pretty much the same thing. They showed the group that was regularly optimistic and thankful, that, that, that journaled their thankfulness for what they were, they showed um, improvement in optimism, but also they showed physical changes. They, 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 the subjects reported fewer aches and pains, which I would be completely thankful for. I'd write that down in my journal. Thank you for my knee not hurting. That's awesome, okay? And I'm sitting there going, this is a clear cut benefit and it just takes being thankful in your situation and in your circumstances tired of your carpal tunnel you're tired of all the headaches try a little bit of gratitude try a little bit of gratitude and see how that changes it's all pretty awesome but here's the thing the coolest part is this is a direct look at the brain's activity during times of gratitude showed an increase in, in blood flow to certain areas. And one area so much was the area of um, level, the highest levels of, of blood flow were in the hypothalamus. Which interestingly enough is important because it controls a huge array of essential bodily functions like eating, drinking, and sleeping. And it has a huge influence, huge influence on our sleeping, our metabolism, and stress levels. How many of us are stressed out? <laughs> Welcome to the holidays. <laughs> and so you you hear all this. It has a huge influence on all of that. And I don't know about you, but you look at these benefits to this and you're like, sounds like thriving. It sounds like thriving to me. And so from this evidence, we can't help but see that there's a clean benefit to choosing to be thankful in everything that gratitude can can be a, a wide range of effects in exercise improved sleep and, and and less depression less stress fewer aches and pains sign me up for that you know and i don't know about you guys but when i read something like this i do a study and then i'm reading god's word i, I just can't help but think that man when god inspired paul to write this song two thousand years plus prior Man, it sounds like he's a little bit ahead of the curve, doesn't it? I, I don't know about you, but it seems like God is already a few steps ahead of science. Science is cool, but God already knew all this, which is why he told us to be thankful in everything. So, with all that being said, what do you do? <laughs> Where do you go from here? What do you do? With all this, you sit around and you let your frustrations and your angers turn inward and, and, and affect you, tearing you apart in all areas of your life, your relationship, your work, your health. I mean, that's an option. You can, you can definitely do that because that's a choice for you. You can make that decision. You can make that choice. It's certainly an option. Or do you pause and allow God to do a little bit of work on your heart? Paul writes in, in Romans 12, 2, he says, Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> Very simply put, guys, this means that you are God's children, and God's children think different. We think differently. See, the life is based off feelings, 
says, how do I feel today? How do I feel about losing my job? How do I feel about my spouse? The life of feeling will never know the transforming power of God. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 10, very similar, he says, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought. So here's the deal, renewing your mind and taking those thoughts captive. You are doing that in choosing to be thankful in every situation, in every circumstance. And while you may not feel thankful, that doesn't mean that you can't be thankful. And you can be thankful in any, in every situation because of your God. You can choose to be thankful because of all that God has promised. You have the free gift of complete forgiveness of all of your sins. You don't have to merit, you don't have to merit justify, justification by keeping all of the law that's been taken care of by Jesus' sacrifice. You have abounding grace at all times. You have God who started a very good work in every single one of you, and he will not, he will not stop until it is finished. And you have a God. That darkest, deepest part of life. He made a way for each and every one of you to be with him in heaven. Where there is no stress, where there is no pain, where there is no hurting, there is no agony. And that is for eternity. That is forever. And so you can choose to be thankful in knowing that. Will you stand with us now as we sing?